From the islands in Laos, plus the border crossing delay, it takes an entire day and the better part of the night to get to Siem Reap, home of Angkor Wat, a tourist magnet for good reason. The bus stopped for lunch at a market where finding something appealing to a Western palate was a challenge. We arrived at midnight during a power outage, which is a regular occurrence apparently. The town's size has exploded since outsiders have been allowed into Cambodia, but their infrastructure hasn't caught up. The delightful, attentive, and punctual Mr. Dina was our driver for several days. We were charmed. Iconic Angkor Wat, surrounded by a moat, is the world's largest religious building. The enormity of the entire complex surprised us. The 630-year Angkor Wat era lasted from A.D. 802 to 1432, at which point invading Siamese made off with the artists, intellectuals, dancers, and fighters. Thai culture still reverberates with the infusion of talent from that invasion. The temples surviving are but a sacred skeleton of the original Khmer Rouge Empire. Wooden residential buildings are long gone. The quality of design and craftsmanship is awe-inspiring. Hinduism was the religion of choice at the inception. Later, Mahayana Buddhism became the prevalent religion. Both influences are obvious in the temples. Today, most Cambodians favor the Theravada branch of Buddhism. Angkor Thom is a walled city encompassing 10 square kilometers. This is where we found a troop of macaques doing their monkey business. Included inside is the Bayon complex with its multitude of carved faces, strangely resembling the king that built it. Costumed entrepreneurs entertain visitors. The Ta Prom area looks much as it did when European adventurers first set eyes on it. Jungle figs and other plants are slowly being removed, and the temples rebuilt by piecing together the fallen stones. But much still remains to be done. In between the main complex area and the outlying temples, rural life goes on. The outlying Bante Shre is called the Ladies' Temple because of the delicate carvings on pink granite stone. Few visitors make it this far, so it's a quieter complex. Our second stop in Cambodia was the Rainbow Lodge near Koh Kong. Featured in the travel section of the New York Times several years ago, it sounded so delightful it was a factor in our deciding to visit Southeast Asia. They have a tranquil spot on the Tatai River, with swimming off the dock, kayaks available for guests, and a resident butterfly expert. Lots of birds, insects, and lizards. Gibbons are heard from the opposite bank. While we kayak along, I'll mention cicadas. In the tropics, there are so many species, each has developed its own signature sound, and even time slot in the evening chorus. It's said you can set your watch by them.
Leaving several days later, we cross again into Thailand and make our way back to Bangkok.